getting beyond the Red Sea may have been the easy bit. I'm leaving Africa to travel deep into Arabia. And here I'm confronted by another great mystery. How could those pioneers have survived here? Back then, most of Arabia was brutal desert, pretty much as it is today. Is it really possible that a handful of Stone Age people could have trekked through hundreds of miles of this and gone on to populate the whole world? Well, here's one man who looks like he knows how to get around in the desert. Archaeologist Jeff Rose has spent years scouring Arabia for evidence of our earliest ancestors. And he's come to meet me in Oman. Hello. Hello, how are you? So, Jeff, why are we in this desolate place? It's actually quite a special location. If you look around, you see all these black rocks that are lying across the surface. Yeah, there's a particular concentration of them just around here. Well, they're not really rocks. They're all ancient stone tools made by early humans. So, for instance, if we just pick this piece up here, it's got this flat surface and the surface with flake scars, they're called, on, on it. And then they've, they've done some retouch on it. They've hit it here and they've hit it here to create this chisel-like edge. So that can't have occurred naturally? No, this couldn't have occurred naturally because of the, the pattern of scars that we see on here. It's called a burin, and they would have been used for working soft materials, hides, leather, bone, wood, anything like that, for carving the tools out of that. So it's a little bit like a chisel? Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing to pick up a stone tool like that just lying on the surface. You get used to it working in Arabia because they're everywhere. Really? It's just covering the surface everywhere you look. So you reckon most of these, I mean, if they've got sort of flat surfaces on, are yep, they likely anything, to be... Like anything you see that's flat lying... Even is, is things like that? Like, that's a blade, and that's from the edge of the blade, so that's called cortex. Yeah. And a lot of times they leave that cortex on because if you're using it, you're not going to cut yourself. Ah, that makes So you makes can even see almost how they would have held it, something like that. That makes a neat little knife, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. OK, so what is the date of this site? Putting you on the spot here. Well, it? it's hard to say. That's, it's a surface site, so it's, um, it's impossible to date anything specifically. But from that technology, from that core I showed you, we can say it's anywhere between 70,000 and 12,000 years ago, and maybe even earlier. As long ago as 70,000 years? There was a site that was recently found on the Red Sea coast in Yemen that was dated to about 70,000 years ago, and it's the same technology. So there were people here 70,000 years ago, and I find that really difficult to believe because at that time the landscape would have been just as dry and harsh as it is today. I mean, okay, there's, there's stone to make tools out of, but where were they living? The biggest problem for those pioneering families would have been the lack of water. But a few short miles from these arid mountains, I'm in for a surprise. Look at this, I'm only two miles away from the desert here, but I could be in rural Somerset. If it weren't for the camels, definitely in Arabia.
this place near the coast of Oman sits right on the edge of the monsoon region of the Indian Ocean. Every year, the monsoons turn this valley into a green oasis. Somewhere you can imagine our ancestors flourishing. But this is a green island.